So in this video, we are going to be using Bubble to build a blogging platform. And depending on how much time we're going to have, we are going to be including a lot of functionality uh, to the specific platform. And the idea is that we are going to have a main screen that's going to display the current blog articles. We're also going to have a screen where a person can go in and add a new blog article. And we are also going to have support for comments. Another thing that we're going to do is we're also going to have support for slugs. And this is something I'm going to show you in just a little bit if you're not familiar with that term. And we're also going to be doing authentication. So we're going to be supporting authentication. So a user can authenticate, enter an article, or they can enter an article as anonymous. It's going to support both of these uh, methods as well. And so let's get started. And so here I am at a basic app. I just created a brand new app. Uh, all I did is I just dragged and drop uh, one of these headers here to this page and that is all that I did. And so the first thing that you have to do whenever you're starting any kind of app is you need to get your data model down. You need to get that thing uh, figured out and you need to make sure you understand what you're doing. And so for the purpose of this tutorial, we are going to have one custom data type and this is going to be post. So we're going to create post and now we're going to enter a bunch of fields. So if you take a look, there's a bunch of built in fields here. There is create a modified date, create a date and a slug and slug is something I'm going to talk about in just a second. But we also have a creator. So if the person is logged in, if they're authenticated and they create a post, it's going to track or who was the user uh, that actually created the post. So we don't need to do that manually. Uh, but we need, but we do need to add several fields. The first one is going to be the title. Okay, the field name field name is title. This is going to be text. We're going to do that. Another another field is the body. Uh, this is also text. Then we need uh, we need to add category. Category is a big one because we can have various things. Now for category. Uh, you can have a field type of text, but a much better idea is to go and create an option set. So I already created a bunch of option sets just to save, our uh, save us time. And we have two option sets. So we have a category. We have a category here and it has uh, three categories. These are the three options. Country guides, blog and city guides. Okay, so maybe we want to move this down or maybe move this up. So we have a blog, uh, country guides and city guides. And the idea is that we're building a blog and this blog has three categories. We can also, we can always add more categories later on. But the idea is that, that you can have an article where it's just a simple blog where, you know, this person wrote, hey, you know, I did this, I did that. I visited this city, I visited that city. And these categories are for more thorough articles. So we have country guides. Uh, could be a guide about Canada or a guide about Mexico and city guides, maybe New York City guide, uh, San Francisco guide, etc., etc. We also have tags and tags are pretty much the, very similar to categories, but whereas category, it's kind of a, a kind of a general thing, right? We can have a you know, city guide or a country guide, uh, but a post can only have one category. A tag is, you know, all these little descriptive fields. So you can have an article about USA and maybe you're writing about New York, USA. So you're going to tag it USA, New York or Brooklyn or Manhattan. You're going to tag it as much as you can. Whereas that one, one article can, can only have one category. And so I created a bunch of tags here and you can create as many as you want, uh, depending on your specific use case. And now we have a category and we have a tag. So we're going to go back to data types and we are going to create a new field called category and this is going to be of type category and this is not going to be multiple entries we're going to create it here and then for tag it's going to be of type tag and I'm going to call it tags tags yeah tags or tag oh let's just call it tag and this is going to be multiple entries because for tags you're allowed to have multiple so I'm going to make this plural because it's a list of tags and category is category body is text and that is all that we have right now at, at this point in time. We can always come back and add new fields as we are designing the app. Okay, and so I'm going to go back to our design screen. And the first page I want to do is I want to create the main page. This is the index page, and this is going to have a list of your articles. Okay, and so what we want to do is we want essentially have a, a repeating field. Okay, so I'm going to drag and drop my repeating field. We're going to put it here. 
Uh, we're going to expand it a little bit. And you can center it. You can do a lot of interesting things. And we are going to specify the kind of content, right? This repeating group. And this is obviously posts. It's going to be repeating posts. And the idea is this is going to be a front page that you see in pretty much any blog. Uh, you have basically a list of posts uh, and you have the title, you have the description, you might have also the, the person that created it, uh, you might have the category text, but it's going to be limited. It's not going to give you the whole article. You know, if the article is 5,000 words, you can't fit this whole article. You know, the page, this, this front page is going to be too long. So we have this repeating group of type posts. We're going to set the data source to our, um, we are going to do, uh, do a search for, and we are going to grab posts, okay, without any constraints. We have that. So now it's going to be getting posts. The next thing we need to do is we need to drag these fields. The first field is this one right here. I'm going to center it, center horizontally, drag it a little bit down, and I am going to call this the title, the post title. And this is actually dynamic data, current cells post title. Okay, this is very important. And we can actually, we can make it a little bit bigger, maybe H3 dark, or actually maybe H2 dark something like this. So it just stands out a little bit more. Okay, we're going to copy and paste this. And the next one is going to be so we have the title, we might have a category. So this is going to be body, uh, just body. And I'm gonna uh, make it a bit smaller. And this is going to be a uh, instead of title, this is going to be category, okay, category display, because there's only one category. And we're going to go in here, just expand it. And then below it, right, we want to maybe have it something like this. Below it is going to be the body, or at least the beginning of the body. So we're going to go to text. We are going to go here, and we are going to choose text. Uh, current post, and this is going to be body. And now we have the body. And so the body, obviously, we can, we're going to make it shorter because we do not want, you know, 5,000 word articles showing up because this is a repeating group. And now that is what we have. So we don't have any errors. This should work, except we do not have any articles. We do not have any posts. And that is why we need to create a new page uh, called add post. So I'm going to add a new page, add post. We're going to, this is going to be a blank page. We're not going to clone it because there isn't really much to clone here. It's a very simple page. We're going to drag and drop our header here. We're going to drag and drop the header. I want to I want to extend this just a bit. All right. And now we're going to add our typical form for adding new content. Okay. So we're going to go in here and we are going to add a uh, three text fields. Okay. Text field one, text field two, maybe even four. Okay. The first one is the title. Then it's going to be the category. Uh, then it's going to be, actually, I think that's it. Title, category, and the body. I think that's it. And let's just call this body. I think I'm not missing anything at this point. There is also tags as well if you want. So we can do tags. Let's do tags too as well. We're going to put tags here. And we have this. It's nicely centered. We have this here. And now we're going to put our input fields. I'm going to drag this one. This is going to be right here. And this is going to actually be the title. And with the input fields, you want to make sure that you, you know, label them correctly. So this is going to be input title. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to, this is going to be input category. I'm going to copy and paste. This is going to be input tags, copy and paste. And this is going to be this big one here. And this is going to be input body. Now, remember, for the tags and the categories, we are actually not going to be doing an input uh, field. This is going to be a, uh, this is going to be a drop down. So we're going to drag and drop a drop a drop down. Copy this, paste it here, and we need to make sure we actually pull up the right field. So we're going to do dynamic choices. Type of choices is going to be category. Choices source is going to be all category. Option caption is going to be current, uh, current display. 
And so now we have here, we have the title, we have a category, we can tag it. And we have the body here as well. So input body, uh, this is going to be input tags. Uh, this is going to be input category, input title. Okay, so now we have the basic uh, structure done to add an article. And we also need a text here. So we're going to pick this text. We are going to center it horizontally, add new post. We're going to do that. And I want to make it a little bit bigger. So this is going to be H2 dark. Where it's going to be something like this. And then we also need a button. I'm going to drag and drop a button here. We're going to center it horizontally. And this is going to be add new post. Now this needs a workflow. So we're going to create a new workflow. And this is going to be data create a new thing. Type post. And you want to click on add all fields. A little bit of a shortcut for you. For the body, it's going to be input body value. For category, it's going to be input category value. For tags, we're going to add the tags that we have input tags value. We're going to have that. And for the title, we are going to have input title value. And that is it. Now, uh, there's one more thing that we need to do. We need to create a new action and we need to uh, fix the slug. If you don't know what a slug is, a slug is essentially the in the URL, you have the domain name. So you have bubble.io and you have page here. So everything after bubble.io, but before the question mark, that's called a slug. So in this case, it's page is the name of a slug. And so you wanna create slugs in your bubble app for uh, any kind of pages, any kind of you know user generated content or content that you created yourself because it's going to be a lot more organized and it's, it's going to be a lot more memorable. Okay. So you want to change thing to change result of step one, and you want to create a slug and we're going to create a slug based off the title. And I'm going to show you once it, once we create this new post, how it's going to look like, but typically the slug is going to be based off the title. Okay. So we are done. Next, we want to refresh back to maybe the index page. So we want navigation go to and we want the index page very simple data to send no data to send and we are done for this specific workflow so this should work so i'm going to preview it i'm going to preview it just to see how it looks like and i am logged in so i'm using just the built-in authentication i'm already logged in and that means it knows my username my email and all that and that's great because it's going to associate it automatically with the current user. And so we're going to create a new uh, title. So let's say this article is about Mexico, uh, my trip to Mexico and category is going to be, let's say this is a country guide and we're going to tag it Mexico. And the body is going to be in this article. I'll tell you about, about my trip to Mexico. And obviously it's, hopefully it's going to be a little longer than, than this, but this is enough for the, for the demo here, add new post. It should create a new post, create a new slug, and redirect us to the home page. And on the home page, we immediately see that article. Now, granted, it's not formatted perfectly, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm not going to mess too much with the CSS and HTML and all that. I'm not going to do a lot of design or CSS specifically. But you see that it's working. So we have my trip to Mexico, country guys in this article. I'll tell you about my trip to Mexico. So what we want is we want a link. So on the index page, we want a link uh, to lead the user to the actual article, right? And so we want a link. So we're going to drag and drop link here. And we are going to go here. And we're going to call this read more. And this is going to be internal page. Destination page is actually, we don't even have that uh, page. And this is going to be a new page. So let's create this new page real quick. Page, add new page. This is going to be a post page. We're not going to clone anything. We're just going to add the header. Uh, we are going to go here. This is the header. I'm going to drag and drop it here. Okay, I want to expand this just a bit. There we go. And this page is going to display the article. So every single blog has this. It has the main page and it has the detail page where you're going to see the actual post. Typically, people link off the post. And so you end up going directly to the post, but this is all the same. And so we just need uh, text. We need uh, this text. This is going to be the title. H2, we can make it even H1 dark. We can make something like this. 
we're gonna center this and we are gonna this is gonna be the title so dynamic data we also want to send uh, this page type to post and that way it knows uh, where to get the data so I can click on this I can go to dynamic data and I can do current page post title that's it current page post title and now it's gonna know exactly how to do it next we want to actually set up the content so we're gonna drag and drop text we're gonna make it a little bit bigger we're gonna do that and we're gonna drag this here we're gonna center it and this is going to be current page post body that's it and now we have the whole article here okay and so we're seeing the article and what do we need for the article? We need actually, uh, we actually need to display uh, the comments and we wanna add a comment. So first I'm gonna add a button here. That's going to be an input field, okay? We're gonna go in here. So this is here, this is somewhere here. And I'm gonna drag it right here and I'm gonna expand this page. And this is gonna be a comment field, okay? So we're gonna go right here. And it's just below it. And this is going to be our comment. So I'm just going to call it uh, placeholder is your comment. And initial content, there's no initial content. Simply because uh, it's, it's going to be a new, uh, new content. And we are going to drag and drop a button. We're going to center it. And we are going to add this button, add your comment, add comment. Okay? So not only will we see the actual post, and remember, we're seeing the body. This is the title here. It's not being displayed, but it's there. It's there. It's going to display it correctly. We have the body. We have the title here. We have the comment. And this is going to create a new workflow. And we want to start a new workflow. And we want to, what do we want? We want to modify, make changes to a thing. The thing is the post, current page post. We want to modify the comments. So the comments is actually, we haven't added the comments. So we're gonna go back to the data. We're gonna go back to post and we need to add a comments. Okay, so I'm gonna put comment and this is going to be a text and there's gonna be multiple texts because there could be multiple uh, comments on a specific post. I'm gonna create it here. We have the comments list of texts. I'm gonna go back to the design, back to workflow. And what we're gonna do here is now we have comments here. Comment, add, and this is going to be, actually, I forgot uh, to have a descriptive name for this. This is going to be input comment. So we are going to go back to our workflow here, uh, comment add and input comment value. And that is it. And so now we can add the value. And we want to redirect the person. Anytime you're doing some kind of data modification, you want to redirect the person somewhere. Because whenever you're doing some kind of action, they're not seeing the end result. It's not like you're displaying data. That's, that's, that's an action all in itself. But whenever you're writing data or you're modifying something, you want to always kind of redirect them, right? So you, what you want to do is you want to refresh the page. We're going to be refreshing the page in order to see those new comments. Now, the other thing that we need to do, we have this input, we have the comment. What we're missing is the existing comments okay so you know obviously on this first article there's not going to be any comments but later on there will be so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here i'm going to center it i'm going to okay and here i want to list the existing comments and to do that what do we need we need repeating group okay we're going to put our repeating group here there we go we're going to put it here and this is going to be a list of comments now what is the type of content? The type of content is going to be text because these comments are essentially text. They're not posts. They're not, you know, users. They're not. They're just text. And the data source is going to be current page post comment. Okay. And this is a list of text. And that makes it that that combines it perfectly. And this is going to be our existing comments. Then we're going to drag and drop the actual text. And the text could be somewhere here. And the text is going to be person dynamic data, current sales text. That is it. It's just one text. We are not creating a very complicated app. We're not storing the actual username, the date of the comment. We're just storing text. You can all change that later on if you want. And now we have the comment. We have this. We have existing comments. We have the, uh, the actual post, the title, and all that. So let's go and test it out. 
let's go to index comment here and so we go to read so destination is going to be post and current sales post is the data that we are passing and now this data is going to know exactly what we're doing okay so all right so now we can test it out if it's working correctly we're going to hit on preview and we are going to see what we have here and so we have our first article here we're going to click on read more and it's going to redirect us to the content so we have the name of the field and then we have this long article and it's it's a little bit longer than i thought and let's say we want to add a new comment so this is going to be comment one thanks for a great article add comment and now it refreshes and it should automatically show the comments so let's say we want to do thanks for an awesome article add comment and now we have the second comment that gets displayed and so this is working perfectly and as you can see this slug this is the slug right here so whenever we uh, deploy this app and we are not in the development environment whenever we enter the production environment we are going to see this here we're going to have the name of the app and it's going to be post and it's going to be the slug right here and that is it that is very very clean url there's no issues there's no uh, problems at all so one other thing that I want to do is I want to test this add new post to make sure that let's add another post and to see if we have we're going to be seeing the these posts uh properly displayed on the main page. And so let's say this post is about my trip to Texas. Uh category is let's say, you know, blog or something like that. Tags is going to be Texas and here I will say Texas is a is a big state. Here is what I learned. We're going to add this new post and we are redirected to the index page and we have two posts. We have my trip to Mexico country guys. We can, we have this post here, my trip to Texas blog, and I can click on this. I can read more about it and there it is. And I can add new comments. Great, great post. I love Texas. I can add a new comment and there it is. And so there's a lot of things that we can add. Obviously I am logged in right now. So if we go back to the data type, uh, you will see, so if we go to the app data and we go to all posts, you will see that it's going to have my name there. So if I go to edit this, it's going to have created by my email, which is associated with my username. If we go to this username here, you're going to see this username right here. This is me. I'm logged in. If you're not logged in, that field is going to be empty. And if you're logged in as somebody else, you're going to have another email there. And so there's a lot of things that we can do here. There's many, many things, you know, with application development, uh, you're never really finished. You can keep adding features over and over again. And so I don't want to make this video unnecessarily long. I just wanted to show you what is possible to do with these no code tools. You can pretty much do everything that you could do with development. And so there's a lot of the features we can add. There's a lot of things that we can do. And so I'm not really sure if that's something you want to see. If you want me to do a more thorough video with dashboards and APIs and a lot of interesting things, leave a comment below and let me know what you want to see. Uh, like this video too. That lets me know that you're interested in this kind of content. And uh, let me know if you enjoy this video regardless. Let me know below in the comments if you enjoy this kind of video. Let me know if you want to see uh, other kind of bubble videos or you want to see more videos with another uh, app. Uh, platform no code at pl app platform just let me know what you think i would love to hear your feedback and that is, this is all that i have in terms of this video i really really hope you enjoyed it uh subscribe to the channel if you haven't already this channel is all about no code stuff uh where we talk about different uh tools different platforms to create apps without writing a single line of code so i really hope you enjoyed this video at least learn something new and i will see you in the next video.